Hey guys, so we just confirmed with Toyota one of the Tacoma TRD Pro's most iconic design elements is going away. I'm talking of course about the desert air intake or if you're everybody else in the world, the snorkel. Toyota is killing the desert air intake in the Tacoma. In this video we're going to talk about why raised air intakes are cool, why they're maybe not so cool and perhaps why you shouldn't put an intake or a snorkel on your new vehicle. This is obviously not a new Tacoma, this is a Jeep Gladiator. It's actually our Jeep Gladiator and we had a raised air intake installed here on the side of this vehicle. And we're gonna talk about what it does because it's probably not what you think. So we're gonna remove the air box because we're gonna have to modify this tube right here and put what they call the Z tube on. This is made for factory inlet. So we'll take this whole air box out, we'll take this off, and we'll install a new tube that's gonna be a round outlet right here that will hook the snorkel in to where it won't flood when you drive it underwater. We'll kind of make some tack marks on it with an auto punch, and we'll cut this inner part out, and then we'll actually do an outer cut with another template. Wow. Jack did a great job here. You can see that the inlet is right where the hole is in the hood. If I did this, it would be like on the quarter panel or something. So this is why you take it to Johnson. Hey, look at that. What a pro, dude. That is awesome. That cool looking piping that sticks up above the windshield on my Jeep, that is traditionally thought of as a snorkel. And growing up, I always thought snorkels were the coolest things because I thought it could allow you to do things like this basically drive an old Land Rover through some of the most inhospitable terrain in the entire world and drive through literal rivers like they're doing in this picture here. And let me show you the kind of the principle behind a snorkel. You really need four things to run an engine. Well, okay, it's a very simplistic way of looking at it, but you need compression, you need spark, you need fuel, and you need air. And the air thing is a that's the thing that always fascinates people because if you try running an engine through a river and you have compression, spark, fuel, and water, you're probably gonna have a bad day and you're probably gonna do some seriously expensive damage to your engine. Now here's the pickle that a lot of uh, people are in when they try to cross big streams. This is a little Daihatsu and you can see here we've got the intake and there's a tube that extends from the intake along this tube this kind of the snaky thing and then it goes into this box inside this box is an air filter and then you can see it continues its journey along to the front of the vehicle and this is where the actual Daihatsu sucks in its air from there's a little hole located by the headlight and the idea is you extend this tube from up in the front of the vehicle along the a pillar here and you'd be sucking in clean air up here by your head so you can go through deeper water that was great and all, but in actuality, it's, it's really not that easy. This fantasy of you driving through five feet of water with just the snorkel sticking up above the water line is largely unrealistic for the vast majority of vehicles. Now, old school diesels can actually operate pretty well underwater because an old diesel is typically mechanically injected and requires absolutely no electricity at all to remain running. So as long as you've got air, compression and fuel, that little grumbly diesel engine will probably just keep chugging along regardless of the water. However, modern day diesels and gasoline engines require electricity. And when you mix electricity and water, really bad things happen. And that's where the whole snorkel idea kind of falls apart. When you try to operate a gasoline engine, things get a little bit more complicated because you need a spark in order for that engine to run. Now, that spark, of course, comes from a little burst of electricity on an old engine that is distributed via a distributor. Then, of course, you have a coil, and if either the distributor or the coil got wet, well, you'd be dead in the water. Now, in the old days of carburetors and distributors, that was actually a fairly easy task to solve. And in fact, there's a great video out on YouTube, be sure to look it up, about how Truce would waterproof their World War II Jeeps. And actually, uh, there was a whole kit they supplied. You take this asbestos clay, I know, pretty nasty stuff, and you would wrap it around the distributor and around the ignition components, and then you could kind of waterproof it, and then along with the snorkel and an extension for the exhaust, uh, the troops in World War II could uh, drive their 
uh, wheelies and B and four GPWs off landing up uh, landing crafts into the ocean and then onto beaches. Uh, but those were incredibly simple vehicles, and you would need a heck of a lot of asbestos clay to waterproof a newer vehicle uh, because the days of little distributors and spark plug wires have been replaced with computer after module after computer after module and if any of those get wet you can be in big trouble too. My favorite example of this is the Land Rover Discovery 2 which quite honestly is pretty simplistic by modern day standards. It was out in the late 90s, it was a very off-road worthy vehicle, a lot of people put snorkels on them but a lot of people figured out the hard way that even back in the 1990s pretty much everything was computer controlled so while you could get that air intake well above the waterline the actual computer in the Discovery 2 that controls the transmission is located underneath the driver's seat. So people would go through in their Land Rover, they tackle a river, water would come up here above the sill, it would start leaking through the door, and it would short out <laughs> the transmission module underneath the seat, and then the transmission wouldn't know how to shift, and even though the engine may remain running, you'd be, you'd be dead because the transmission would go, Wah! I don't know what just happened and it would have a total freak out moment and that was back in the 90s nowadays some the, the new f-150 is something like 40 computers in it and if you short out any any little diode in any of those computers there's a good chance that you're not going to be making it home and that is exactly why toyota calls that raised air intake a desert air intake and not a snorkel because a snorkel implies that you can drive through extremely deep water perhaps even up to here where a desert air intake implies that you can drive through a desert and Toyota doesn't want you to take your new Tacoma through water up through here because chances are likely you'll fry some seriously expensive computer out and then go back to them and be like, what the heck, I thought you called it a snorkel, but they're like, aha, it's not a snorkel, it's a desert air intake, it doesn't change the waiting depth whatsoever. And even on this Jeep, you know, we put the snorkel on here, snorkel on this Jeep, mostly because it looks cool. There are little plugs in the snorkel which do seal it against water coming into the air box. You're supposed to put those plugs in when you go through deep water and pull them out when you go just driving around town so that in case you get water through here it can drain out the bottom. But even if you put those plugs in and properly seal off the intake, you still have the fuse box up here by the windshield and tons and tons and tons of other control modules that would most likely um, end your day prematurely if you tried to go through the Pacific Ocean. Anyways, let's pretend that you have a modern diesel or gasoline vehicle and you were able to seal all the ignition components and all the computers from the water. You're still not out of the woods yet because the differentials have little breathers on them and you have to extend those breathers because if you don't, they will fill up with water and ruin your differential seals or worse, ruin your differentials because of course you don't want uh, nice salty water or even fresh water floating around in your diffs. So realistically, the whole idea of huge water crossings is not, not very realistic when it comes to modern day snorkels on modern day vehicles. Old, old school land cruisers with small diesel engines, yeah, you could probably get away with it. Modern day Wranglers, modern day uh, land cruisers, modern day Tacomas, modern day Forerunners, you, you probably don't want to exceed the maximum fording depth that the manufacturer recommends. At least, I wouldn't. So if they're not for water, what are the advantages of a raised air intake on modern day vehicles? Well, some people will tell you there are actual advantages to putting your actual air breather way up here because most vehicles have the intake like on this Ford here on the engine and they might tell you that, you know, you get cleaner, fresher air, less dusty air when you're sucking it way up high. Um, I understand that reasoning. I don't know if I agree with it. I have uh, driven in quite a number of very dusty environments and um, typically the air down here is not going to be very different than the air up here if you're driving through a dust cloud. Uh, that's just my opinion. Now there is some, I think, truth to the fact that you're sucking in colder air though because, y you know, you've got the engine here and a lot of intakes are located uh, near the engine, perhaps near the exhaust manifold and the you could be sucking in hot air, so perhaps your engine is receiving some colder air up there. If you're wondering about, you know, sucking in water and stuff, the manufacturers of these uh, intakes have thought of that. They typically have drains in them so that you don't suck in like rainwater or snow up through the engine. Honestly, primarily guys, the main benefit is they look cool on modern day vehicles. That's why it's on the Jeep. I just think it's a really cool look. I, I don't think you get a lot of clean air benefit going from here to here. You know, that doesn't seem like it would change that much. Perhaps you get a little, maybe a little bit of power benefit from like a ram air effect, but yeah, 
I just think on most modern day vehicles, they look pretty cool. Well, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Uh, what do you think of these snorkel slash air intakes? I mean, they're cool, but you have to cut holes in the side of the vehicle a lot of times to install them. Um, and check out TFLCar and TFLTruck.com for the latest and greatest in new car and truck reviews.